Life's about decisions, guys, and opportunities that we take advantage of when we get presented with them. We never know when we're gonna get presented with an opportunity that gives us a chance to go to the next level or take us from where we wanna go right now, our vision from ideology to reality. That's fine, you can say whatever you want, but I learned this from Barry Bonds, the best hitter ever. And I could tell you exactly how he did it. I integrated it into my program and tweaked my swing and did my stuff. And then I'm a two-time third baseman all-star. I have zero clue how to field a ground ball, guys. Zero clue. It's a process, right? So what did I do? I went to the best guy in the team, Omar Vizquel. He had 11 gold gloves. And I'm like, hey, how do you do it? And he taught me. And it's about being a student of the game that gets you to the position to go out there and compete with everybody else. But first and foremost, we have to get out of our own way. I say it like a level system, a level up system, guys. I was like operating at a level seven. That was my full potential of what I could do. So think about in your business, wherever you are, like you're operating against level 10s, 11s, and 12s. Like I was playing against the best, like people making $400 million, insane stuff. They're doing stuff that you couldn't even imagine. So how does a level seven potential operate and compete against, and not just compete against, but have success against 10s, 11s, and 12s. It's figuring out how you play the game. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? When you talk to yourself, the most important conversation you'll ever have in your life is a conversation you have with yourself, not with God or a higher power or your spouse or your boss or your kids or, or whatever. It's with yourself. And what keeps so many people back is themselves and the voice and the language they use with yourself. Because that language and that conversation you have with yourself, guys, is the foundation of who you are. People can find themselves inside their internal zoo, that shackled to the status quo and complacency and, and mediocrity. And I said, you wanna hear something funny? He said, what? I said, imagine being someone who lived your childhood dream of playing Major League Baseball, flying the private jets, the mansions, multiple vehicles, uh, anything and everything I wanted on top of the world, having everything but fulfillment and didn't know who I was. And I definitely didn't own my life because I didn't have to because I'm a God. I had little girls in the stands hold up signs saying, will you marry me, Shay? Like, how do you process that? And I do autograph signings for $10,000 an hour. Pay attention, dude, $10,000 an hour. And girls would come to the table, preteen girls, crying and shaking just because they got to meet me like I was Justin Bieber. So it's like, how do you process that? Because they couldn't see that that pain-driven game that I was playing and that internal battle that I was fighting and, and all that stuff that I was going through and living that life, my dream, both my childhood dreams and, and, and actively living that in real time and hating who I am because I don't know who I am. So I'm talking to this gentleman and I was like, imagine doing that and then losing everything and being one breath away from losing your life and giving up. Because eight years ago, I was in the floor of a van and after I overdosed on drugs and alcohol, I tried to flee, run numb and, and get away from that pain all by myself with nobody else around, motionless on the floor of this van. And this is somebody that so many people envy. And as the soul's leaving the top of my head and I'm clinging onto my last breath, this van was parked outside my ex-wife's house with my three beautiful adopted children inside an arm's distance away. The children I admired so much and the reason why I quit baseball the first time. And I'm laying there and the thoughts going through my mind are, you're a failure, you're a loser, you lost everything. What would your parents think if you left this world today, Shay? What kind of dad would do this to his kids? My answer to that was, I don't know. I'm nothing if I don't have baseball. So I let go. I don't know if I died or if I fell asleep because the game had become my name, my identity. And I'm sharing this with this gentleman. And I'm like, imagine being there and going through all that stuff that you envisioned and you imagined and being 46 years old. But check this out, buddy. You know what's crazy? I found my smile. When you find your smile, guys, everything else takes care of itself. You just walk through doors. I got the goosebumps right now, man. You walk through doors, you smile and walk through a door, but you have to take care of yourself. So many of us are sitting here in limbo. So many of us are sitting here in this spot of just a land of nothingness, just like, I'm all alone. But I got off the floor of that van and I said, man, I gotta make a decision. I was forced with two crazy, powerful, angry, 
painful decisions. I had to take back control and own my life. I had to do it, nobody else. And unfortunately, what happens with so many people, there's two ways, you either get humbled or life will humble you. A lot of guys, a lot of people, especially men, have to go through a traumatic experience to, to, to have that to be an aha moment. And I'm here and uh, uh, to my last breath, I'm gonna use my voice to help people understand like, like, dude, like, I don't want you to go through what I went through. But the thing is, is I found it. The only thing I can share with you guys is like, I, I did so much work because skill sets have utility, right guys? You have to gain the skill sets of whatever you're trying to achieve. I did so much work, I should have never made it, but I became so good that they had to play me. And that's your decision. <laughs> Show up. You never know who you're gonna come across, guys. Yeah. You never know what you could do. I, never, I, I cracked home runs, like, like, it's crazy because I could step to the plate in Yankee Stadium. I had the third highest active batting average in Yankee Stadium behind Paul Konerko, Ichiro Suzuki, and myself. I was the third best player in Yankee Stadium, the biggest stage in baseball, with 40,000 fans every night. I rocked it there. I could step to the plate and I could perform. But what happens is so many of us put all of our eggs in one basket to perform in our profession. If I just provide, if I just have status, if I just have success, if I just achieve this, all this other stuff's gonna go away. So I'd, I'd be on ESPN, I'd ruin the Yankees fans' nights, and I'd, I'd be all over, have a game-winning home run, and I'd go out with my entourage, stupid, and I'd have $4,000 dinners at a five-star restaurant, and I'd sit to the supper table, and I, I couldn't step to the plate there because I'd almost pee my pants every time because I had fear of walking across the restaurant to use the restroom in fear of everybody staring at me. No self-esteem, no self-worth. So that's an extreme example, but so many of us put our eggs in the basket of performance, our job, and our health goes by the wayside. It's the number one thing we gotta take care of, right? Three things to help you guys with health is sleep, exercise, and eat. Simple, simple. 2005, I made the All-Star Game for the Toronto Blue Jays. We're playing in Detroit, Michigan. I take a Citation 10 private jet from the Chandler Airport to, to uh, Detroit, Michigan. You have to have a 5,000 foot runway to have private jets take off from there. This runway was 4,995 feet. I got clearance because I am big, bad, shade pimping. Riding off my ego. So here I am flying to the All-Star Game, my childhood dream from Chandler, Arizona to Detroit, Michigan in a Citation 10 jet. Imagine yourself, pilot, co-pilot, 10 passenger, multi-million dollar jet. This is the fastest civilian jet in the world. I'm flying at 64,000 feet, going 640 miles an hour. A normal commercial airliner flies about 35, 40,000 feet, goes about 300, 400 miles an hour, that's it. I'm on top, just going like a bullet. And I'm sitting there by myself, getting ready to go play in front of 100 million people the next day. Didn't have any distractions. No family, no kids, no wife no entourage, no friends with me, by myself. I look out the window, I can't even see the ground I'm so high. You know the thoughts going through my mind, guys? This is all it is? It, really? I'm living it. I'm doing the American dream that everybody thought they should do. I, get, I beat it against all odds. Everybody told me no, I can't do it. And I've swung a baseball bat a million times and I'd be working with my friends, wouldn't work. And everybody out there, all my comrades, and everybody's like hanging out, I'm working and I did it. And I'm cracking home runs and I'm making millions and millions of dollars. And I hate myself. I hate everything about this. But I had to go on that night the next day and put my smile on and perform. See, every time I took a picture with a fan, guys, I always smiled. Because you never know what somebody's going through. You guys never know what anybody's going through that's lost, that's in that spot of just being able to be one breath away from giving up. And if you just give them a smile, make them noticed, that might give them an opportunity to get through one more day. So I always smiled because I never knew what anybody was going through that came and took a picture with me. I've been looking for my smile and my identity and my purpose of who I am my whole life. And I think a lot of us do that is what we happen with us is that we try to find that, fill that void with external success. And if I just do this, and if I just do that, and if I get this, I'm telling you guys, it don't work.
The greatest feeling in the world is discovering who you are. You're going to discover gifts and talents that you didn't know you have and utilize those and strengthen those and get those skill sets that are wrapped around those and get that, that, that purpose and that mission and that vision and go out there and deploy that and use that to impact somebody else's life. There's no better feeling in the world, guys. I'm telling you that right now.